Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by a Hall of Fame promoter, Frank Warren. Happy New Year, Frank. How you doing? Happy New Year to you, Dan, and all your viewers. Uh, how am I doing? I was in hospital for eight days with COVID. Other than that, I'm all right, mate. Wow. That's, that's a bombshell to start the um, interview. Yeah. Eight days. It must have really affected you. T tell us a little bit, if you don't mind, about how, you know, how it affected uh, your health. I tested positive just before Christmas. Didn't feel too good. Um, my wife wanted to call an ambulance and I didn't want to go into hospital. So they gave me a bit of oxygen. I went and the next day I was really dreadful and she called the ambulance and uh, I went up in hospital. And that was it. So I was stuck in a hospital. Um, there were a lot of other you know, really poor people, you know, much worse than I was, but uh, with it. And it was uh, so... That's where I was. I spent, spent a bit of time in there suffering, trying to fight, get my breath and so forth. And uh, that was it. So I come home last week, beginning last week. And not, not just a bit of time, actually over Christmas as well. Uh, just, just be, uh, it was just uh, Boxing Day. And as I say, so it was, came in in the new year and I got that. So what would you say to people out there, not to be opportunistic, but I think it's important that someone that's been through it can say this. People that don't think COVID's a big deal or, or that think the lockdown's too much and all of that sort of stuff. You, you've been through it now. It, it seems pretty serious. I've been in there. I've seen it. I've seen, you know, people fighting for their breath. There was one guy who's been in there for five months. There was another bloke who had a, a blood clot in his lungs. I mean, they were f literally fighting to breathe. Um, and I was on, you know, in the ward, and you're hearing it, and you're, I mean, basically, you, you're just, you're in the bed, and same as everybody else, and you're, you, you, they're cough, coughing, trying to catch, basically breathe, to live, and fighting to live, and it's, uh, I think, from a perspective of the the nurses who obviously work very hard, long hours, the orderlies and the doctors, I think it's an insult to them that people can even doubt it. It's an insult to them that they disregard what the advice that they're being told to take at the moment. It's just, it's, it's dreadful. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to get through it and get out there and get out of the hospital. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's not easy and it's, and, and it don't leave you feeling a hundred percent. You know, it's a, it's a very debilitating, um, uh, you know, COVID it just absolutely takes the life out of you. It literally does. It sucks the life out of you, and uh, and obviously uh, it takes time to get over. And you got you got you know you you got to work hard at trying to get yourself fit and well again. But uh, you know it's no uh, it's no joke. And all these idiots who talk about that it's a hoax and so forth, I just cannot believe it. I mean, you know, as I say, I've suffered it. I've seen it, and I don't know how anybody can come up with all these ridiculous conspiracy theories. I mean, they. they, they, they they can't have, you know, they can't have any intelligence at all to know what we're going through and how bad it is. And it is bad. And the one thing that I was quite surprised at talking to them in the hospital, they said the amount of young people that are now um, going into hospital with it, catching it and going to hospital. So, you know, you've got to follow the advice and the advice is no one wants to be locked down, especially if you're young, you want to be out and about. I mean, think when I was a young man a hundred years ago, of course you want to be out and about. You want to be doing things and doing things what young people do. But unfortunately, you can't. You've got to show some discipline. And that's how it is. You show the discipline. Like, you know, I think about like when my dad was young, when the war was on, and my granddad and look at things like that. They had wars on. They had to go and fight in wars and things like that. So I, you know, it's not too much to sacrifice to to. to and it is difficult, and especially you've got young families and so forth. But you've got to get on with it. You've got to focus and get on with it. You've got to keep safe and well. And you've got to stop this epidemic, this pandemic from spreading. And the only way you're going to do that is follow the guidelines. And if you do do that, as as is shown over the last week that they or last couple of weeks where they locked down people, that the uh, the R levels going down. And the only way you can bring it down is by following the advice. Were you um, impressed, satisfied with how the NHS were when you were in there, the nurses and the doctors and so on? Well, was, they were marvellous, magnificent, you know, and you, and you just say they look after you. Of course they look after you. They're, 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 they're unbelievable, selfless people. We, you know, you, you, you can't underestimate how much they contribute. And it's and they're doing a dangerous environment. They're, I mean, they're in there with people who are positive. 
you test positive, it was suffering, and the wards were all full. I mean, the wards are full. There's no, there's no room. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's 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 just horrible. And you and and you know, I was lucky, and I look, and I swear that swear. I mean, the poor old bloke opposite me, and I'm old, but the bloke, poor old bloke opposite me, as I mentioned earlier, with a blood clot in his lung. I mean, he, he, he didn't like. He was going anywhere soon, and there was no other fella, as I said, was in there for a while. You know, he, he looked like he was going to be there for quite a few months, plus the other people there. And you know, everybody wants to get home. It's, it's, you're in a hospital where you're not allowed. There's no visitors. Can only buy a newspaper. It's, it is what it is. It's, it's awful. But the, it's, but the alternative is not to be around. So you've got to get get yourself well, which is, you know, I just try to get myself up every day and walk and try and. I mean, you've got your mask on and the, the oxygen. But I just try to, you know, you know I've, I've got to get myself, try and get myself well and get myself out of there. And that's what um, I tried to do and was successful. And just before we move on from the subject, just um, let us know which hospital it was so we can give them the credit they deserve for the treatment. I was in the Lister Hospital in Stevenage. And they were, as I say, marvellous, absolutely marvellous. And uh, I can't say how grateful I am, I'm sure, as everybody is who's, who, who's who's been in there and how much we appreciate all of them and, and what they do for do for us all. Well, we're obviously grateful too um, that you made it through. You seem back to full health. I don't know if you feel it, <laughs> but you see it. You see it. Uh, you look it. Yeah, well, you know, I am um, I'm obviously much better than I was. <laughs> I weren't too good at one stage, but, you know, thankfully, uh, touch wood, I'm, I'm getting there. Good stuff. Well, it's going to be a busy year, so we're going to need you at um, full capacity. You guys have announced the first big show of 2021 with Jamel Herring and Carl Frampton on February the 27th. Um, just tell us, after the delays and so on, was it pretty easy to bring it together now? Because they're they're good guys. They seem to both really want the fight. Well, no, it was a bit difficult because Stevenson's people objected to it. So we've been, you know, we've, we've had a few objections and getting it over the line, but. You know, we we really worked hard to get Carl his opportunity to become a you know Ireland's first three weight world champion, um, and it's the first show back for us. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll we'll see it's something extra special when these two guys get in the ring. You know, it's um, obviously no fans, so for Herring, it's not like he's going into Belfast into the Lions then. Um, he's going to go into a pretty neutral venue, so I, 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 I think it's going to be a great fight. And it's got we've got you know, we've got a great undercard that we're announcing next week. But I think everybody's going to be really pleased with it. It's a, it's a big show. I think we know from the board orders. Correct me if I'm wrong. That Kakachi and Woodstock should be on that show. Is that right? That will be on there. Yeah, that will be on there. And where will it be? I know it's London, but is it going to be at BT Studios or, or is that undecided? It, that's it'll be in London, but that's looking looking like the venue at the moment. Good stuff. And when will we hear? I'm not rushing you, but when will we hear the rest of your schedule? Because everyone's very excited. I know you're not. You don't usually announce loads of shows at once. You give them space to breathe. But when will we start hearing about more shows? Well, obviously, as I say, I've been out of action, but the boys have all been working hard and keeping things going. So. Uh, we had, I had sort of had a we had a lengthy um, conference call this morning with everybody concerned. So we we you know we'll be there's a few things obviously that uh, that have happened anyway. For example, the uh, WBO put out the uh, Liam Williams Andrade fight. So that's at the moment for negotiations. If we can't agree terms, I think it's about, we've got about six or seven days. Then that'll go to purse office between and it'll be between us and Matram. You would think who's going to win that. Um, the Board of Control put some fights out. I think they put out Denzel Bentley and Felix Cash, which is a you know great fight. I, I like that fight and I like it for Denzel. Um, Brad Foster and uh, Gamal Yaffe for the uh, three titles, British European Commonwealth. Um, we're considering what we're going to do with Zelfa Barrett and Archie Sharp, whether we want to be going down that road for an eliminator. I mean, there's more than a, an eliminator, that's for sure. You know, he's, uh, Archie's got a, a world ranking. So we've got to think about that. I've got, and I haven't had a chance to speak to um, Archie or MTK about it. Um, there's the um, Arthur Yard rematch, and also the the WBO. My my brain, my brain, I can't think of his name at the moment. But they put out that um, the Arthur fights for a an eliminator against uh, oh god, fighter that um, top rank have got 
it'll come to me in a moment who that is. Okay. So we got that one. We got Usyk and Joyce. Looks like that's going to be put out as a as a um, final eliminator. So we're working on that. Um, obviously, I've got a meet. Uh, not obviously, but I've got a meeting this week with the uh, um, uh, with the Bowers team, um, Martin and Tony, and Daniel Dubois. And uh, he's seeing a specialist this week, so we're going to see where we are with him and when he's going to be out again. Got all our youngsters. Uh, you know, we've got uh, Hamza Shiraz, Willie Hutchinson, Dennis McCann, Adelaide, and amongst many others um, who uh, will be announcing what they're doing. So we've got, we've got quite a lot on. And uh, as I say, quite a few discussions that we had today. And... Uh, their fights that are all going to pan out over the next three or four months. You just ticked off most of the questions on my list. But, oh, Sorry, mate. No, Sorry, mate. I took good. over there. It's good. It's efficient. Um, but I've got a couple of follow-ups anyway. You mentioned those three fights that the board have ordered that match your guys with matchroom guys, and you said you need to speak to Archie Sharp and his team about whether the Zelfa Barrett fight is one you want to pursue. But the other two, can we take it that you do fancy those? So Bentley against Cash, and uh, your fight and Foster. Yeah, they're fights that you know there, and uh, obviously we, you know, we. I think we mentioned last year. Is, is, remember, I said about it never happened. About us getting together and trying to work some of these fights. Like, well, here we are. Is it, it, you know, it's a, some fights there that we can hopefully. Well, Sharp get over Barrett was actually with. on that poster. Sorry. Sharp and Barrett was actually on the poster when you. Yeah, it. there you go, there you go. So let's try and uh, see what we can do now. Let's see if we can make some of these work. How easy do you think it will be to negotiate the fights with Matchroom rather than let it go well, to purse bids? Well, I'm going to. We're not. At the end of the day, the end result will be purse bids. So hopefully we can, you know, move it along if we can't agree. And it's good. Look, it's a couple of phone calls, isn't it? If you want these fights or not, if you don't want them, if you want them, if you, you know. Maybe a bit of horse training. You do one, we do one. But if not, let's just get let's just get the purse bids. 